Well, I was on the internet looking at some destroyed buildings and bits and pieces, and I came across this little uh, CAD drawing of a semi destroyed building, and it covers three of the things that I was actually looking for. Uh, the first one is we've got uh, two floors, the attic space as well. Uh, the destroyed walls at the front of the building and also uh, the actual roof and gable so I'm going to use this as more as a very very loose reference and plan so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run through how I'm going to build this now I'm going to build this in each, uh, or separate levels first level I'm going to start is the ground ground floor ground floor and up to the joists of the first floor and then the second will be the next lift I'm doing it like this so I can show you a couple of different techniques on assembly so I'm going to reposition the camera and we'll start building this right what I've got here is a ceramic tile because uh, the ceramic tile is nice and flat the reason it's got the nice uh, blue water effect on it the simple reason is the camera hates white it just won't focus on it and I had to cover it I had to use one of my old cutting mats on top with a bit of cling film just to stop things from getting stuck to my cutting mat uh, that's the only reason that is I normally work straight onto the ceramic tile because everything comes away from the ceramic tile no problems at all but that's that's the reason why now moving on I have pre-cut a base if the camera will focus because it's white and it doesn't it, see it just doesn't like white I won't move it around too much now I've pre-cut this base from 5mm foam board it is exactly 100, 162 uh, millimeters that way and 162 that because it's it's, it's uh, going to be two of these uh, brick sections. Now I used the corner of the board. This is the actual corner, so I, I knew I had two true uh, right angled lines there. And then just me measured it off and cut it. Nothing too technical. Okay. Now, the theory is, I don't like the letters up, we'll put them down. Just me being funny. So, the plan is to get our brick sections but work from inside out. Like so. Well, we're going to do the corners like so. Two corners. Once the camera decides to refocus again. And there is one thing I will say about this, if I can show it to you, is that when these two actually come together, you've actually got a mortar joint facing one way that goes down, and you've got a mortar joint facing the opposite way. So when they interlock, you've got an equal mortar joint top and bottom of the actual finger. Now, you can get them around the wrong way and you can get the two mortar joints together which will give you a flat joint at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see if we can show you that in a bit more detail. Now that is... When the camera decides to focus. Come on camera. Stop playing around. Now that is the flat joint. Well, we're going to have to move the camera and show you because it is important because when it, when you come to ground up you haven't got a brick joint there and when you turn it round you've actually got the right brick joint I don't know if that's come out because I can't really see I will show you that a, a bit later on I'll bring the camera down and we'll I'll, I'll show you that a bit more closer so you can understand what I'm talking about so it's making sure that 
they're all running the right way you normally know anyway because they don't slide in as easy they seem to sort of bite for some reason so th this is what we're going to do here is we're just going to glue the back side and part of the front side to this corner here and also this corner like so but we're going to leave this front section open for the moment and then we're going to actually fill in and bring it up to joist height so I'm going to be gluing that also I'll be using uh, a little square i.e. just when I glue them together is just to make sure that they're up nice and plumb that is it nice and easy and that's the idea of having the ceramic tile something nice and flat that you can use your square off you know to get your get everything nice and plumb without having getting spirit levels out and also this way as well but if you cut your board nice and square you haven't got no problems so I'm gonna just switch you off for a second I'm gonna get these glued up and then we'll move on to the next bit right just wanted to sort of show you the roughly how I'm doing it I've glued this corner and I've glued it along the bottom and actually positioned that into the base now I've put a little bit of a weight on the top there it's just to uh, stop that board from moving it don't but I always like to be sure and then it's just a matter of using your your square and just making sure that you are square I think it's nice and square which it is I'm quite happy with that so you know that the first corner is glued and it's all nice and square now you can work off that no problem at all so I'm going to carry on gluing and uh, I shall be back in a second okay I want to be second corner now I know I keep uh, jumping back but I just like to make sure people know what I'm doing now where I've joined them I've got the glue out it all squirts out just a little bit of water and that will just disappear and the same on the corner this corner just making sure everything's nice and tight it's in together and the same again just a little bit of water and that glue will nicely disappear back in there like so so that to me looks a pretty good corner I'm pretty happy with that as for the inside, I'll probably have to lift you back up again. I will. Let the camera refocus. On the inside, all I'm doing is some extra PVA glue and just making sure that it's rammed in. Sorry about that, I'm, the volume would have gone up then because I've been hanging right over the mic. And the same with the joints. Just work a little bit of PVA into the joint. You can't see that because that's in the way. <laughs> uh, idiot Simon. So just work a bit of PVA into the joints as you're going along. And the same with that corner. Just push the PVA into it and along the edge. So, I mean, in a matter of less than a minute we've got this back half built I'm going to put that back on there so I don't forget so turn it round as you can see look it's, you look down the wall it's nice and straight as long as you keep using your square as, you, as you're going round and keep everything nice and square everything's going to work nice so I'm going to carry on now I'm going to put this piece and this piece in and that's the outside bit done for the moment because then we're going to move on to the inside right, all the walls are dry as you can see it's all nice and solid now we need to make the thickness of the walls up by putting another skin of bricks round the inside and we need to take it up to uh, actual joist height ceiling the finish for the finish of the ceiling 
Now the height of that is 70 mil and the height of these brick sections are 60 mil. So we've got a 10 mil difference. Now the 10 mil difference is four quarters of bricks, like so. So if we do, if I can do it without getting my big hand in the way. So, no, I better to do it this way, we'll put it on the bottom. Try to do it on the top. So we've got four courses of bricks. We've got a brick section that will go on top. Um, I'll move my hand out of the way in a second. And as you can see, that will make it up to 70 mil. And that's the finish height for our ceiling. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut uh, some slivers of uh, four courses of bricks and get them all glued in around the bottom here ready just to put these on top and get it up to joist height they're very easy to cut you don't have no there's no problems with them well I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do I'll pause the camera and I'll just show you how easy they are to cut right cutting them you need something that's flat hasn't got no lumps on it because these are very much like ceramic tiles if you've ever cut ceramic tiles if you've got a little bit of grit or dirt underneath it you press it and it will crack it <laughs> excuse me and we need four courses one two you see that now is a bit wobbly but there you go one two three four so we need to cut and all I use is the scalpel Just a few strokes down, and hopefully it just snaps like that. So that's one of my pieces, and also what I use, I'll move that out of the way for a second. What I use to uh, clean it up with, as you can see I've been using this, it's just a little piece of MDF with some legs on just to keep it up off my bench a bulldog clip and a piece of sandpaper this is uh, uh, 120 grit uh, I have it coarse because the, the, the paper clogs up pretty quick and uh, the coarser grit allows you to keep sanding even though you've got masses of uh, muck on it so just a few rubs which has just done that Clean that up nicely. That's it. That's as easy as that, and they're all as easy to cut. Right, as you can see, I've glued the four courses all the way around the bottom, right the way round to this side. I don't know if I, you can see it this side as well. So I've done it all the way round, and the camera decides to focus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these ones on top of that to make up my actual height that I need. So I'm going to be gluing these all the way around, same as what I've done the bottom ones, and then uh, I'll come back to you and we'll have another little look. Okay, as you can see now I've got all the internal walls done. I've used all my rubbish up uh, on this part because we won't be seeing this part at all because uh, this is going to be covered with the plasterboard which is this stuff here which is the right height to the ceiling but that's on the next bit now this bit's actually going to take our floor so I should be using this is the correct size it's uh, you know it's totally gone now what the size of that is so let me check uh, that's 4.6 no 4.9 by uh, 1.72 wide so that is actually joist size so what we need to do now is make is to create a little sort of like a lip so I need to put some more brickwork on the outside 
like so. It's so we can make the floor totally separate. We can make the floor to, to actually sit on this brickwork and it'll actually sit down so we can actually get the ceiling plastered and painted. We can get the floorboards on so then when we start the next lift, the next lift is going to lip onto the floor on the top there and we go up then to roof height. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut some pieces to run all the way around and I shall get them glued on and then I shall come back and we'll have another little look. Right, I've fixed the extra eight courses on the outside all the way around as so. What I've actually done is I've cut them out of a full piece and as you see I've got them numbered and I've got these pieces numbered and when we come to do the second lift they will go back together and uh, you won't be able to notice them on the actual brickwork. Now the reason I did all this was for the joists, uh, that's not the one. I did have one. Ah, I've got me up. Losing things today. Uh, so when we actually come to put in the ceiling in and the floor joist, that's how it's going to go. So I can actually build the floor totally separate, place it in, and then we can go up with our next lift. But the next video is going to be on. Uh, we won't be doing the floor, not just yet, that will be a little while away. Uh, the next video is going to be on, uh, we're going to be using this stuff, the plasterboard. We'll be getting that put in all the way around. Uh, tiling the floor, because uh, I've decided this is going to be uh, part of a house of, and this is going to be a kitchen. Uh, so I'm going to put one of them big uh, ingle nook type fireplaces in with the range or hearth in there for cooking and uh, genuinely just make this like a kitchen area uh, for a probably a farmhouse something like that so that's going to be on the next one thank you very much for joining me for this one if there's any questions leave them in the uh, comment box and I will answer them uh, I will answer your comments. So thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you on the next one.